Okay, today we're gonna show you how to install the dynamic DNS updating client for noip.com. We're gonna do this through the terminal. So launch your terminal. Depending on what depending on what distro you have, you'll have to launch it differently. You can all you can most of the time you can have you will be able to search for the word terminal in the bar and you will you'll be able to instantly find it. So the first command you're gonna you're gonna try. For some people, this will work. For most, it will not. Oops. We're gonna use sudo apt-get install no IP2. This will likely not work for you, and we're gonna have to do it manually. In our case, it did not. In your case, you might have. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is change to the directory that we want to download our. Uh, no IP dynamic updating client. In our case, it will be slash user slash local slash source. That's where no IP recommends to install it. We're gonna use the wget command to download the app. It says that permission is denied because we don't have permissions to write to that folder. We're gonna use the sudo command to get permissions. So we have just downloaded the program. We're going to now extract it using the tar command. It will extract it to the same folder. Again, it tells us an error because we don't have permission to write this in a folder. We use the sudo command. It succeeded because there are no errors popping up. Now we're going to navigate to the folder that we just extracted from the file we downloaded. Now in our case, it will be no IP 2.1. middle dash one. Yours might be different because you might have a different version. So to check what version you have, you can just type in the word dir, and you will, you will be able to see all the files and folders inside the folder that we were uh, that we downloaded the file to. In our case, the folder name is no IP 2.1.9-1. You might have a different one, of course. So we're gonna type in cd, our folder name, and a slash after that, that's very important. This will navigate to the folder that we just extracted. Remember, this is going to be your uh, version of the folder. And you have to have the slash at the end. Now we're going to use a command called make install. This will take the source code that we just downloaded with the app from the website. It will compile the code and then it will install the code. When we try to run this command, it will tell us we don't have permission. Again, sudo. Again, you will have a likely. Oops, mine's already installed. In case yours it comes up with an error, they say GSS is not installed. You're gonna have to download a compiler called GSS. You can do this by typing apt-get install GSS. gonna oops so after it installs it will launch the configuration client which is just command line right here as for your email or login ID it's gonna be probably the email you signed up for the account with and then your password if you have a num lock, I'm sorry, if you have a number in your password, try not to use the mumpy keys because they have problems with the terminal that we're using. It says that I only have one host. If you had more than one host, it will let you to pick one. Now it asks us how often do they want to check to see if our IP address, uh, address changed. In our case, it will be 30 minutes, which is the default. You can just press enter and it will set the default. And then it will ask you if you want to run a script every time your IP changes. You can just press enter for the default no. The new configuration file has been created in this location. That's good news for us. Right now, the program is still not running though. To launch the program, we'll issue the following command. Slash user, slash local, slash bin, slash no IP2. Press enter. And it will tell us there are no configuration file. You try to run this as sudo. And it succeeds. 
since no errors popped up, the program is likely we can verify this by running the command with a space minus D option. It will tell us you can't look at the file. That's because we're not running a sudo. And it says that one, no IP process is radioactive. That's great. And it tells us a bunch of info that who cares about. Remember, you can use this command to launch at any time. To stop no IP from running or to close the program, you run this command to find out its process process ID. It says one host active and the process ID is 3611. We're going to run a similar script again instead of the S, capital K, and then the process ID. And the process 3611 is terminated and no IP is not running anymore. As you can see, no. No IP process active. Now, to be able to get this program to start up every time your computer restarts, we will have to do a couple of things. This is optional. You can manually start the program every time you start the computer or every time you need the program. But with this, it will start every time you. It'll make it easier, whatever. Some people need it. Anyway, we're going to have to want to create a script, save that script in a special folder, a startup folder. And then link that startup folder to the startup script. That's three things. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Notepad or whatever program you use to write stuff down. Copy the code that's in the description of this video. We're going to save this code onto the desktop. We're going to name it no IP2. It's very important that we name it this and we save on the desktop. Unless you know how to, you'll, you'll see why. We save it, we close it. Oh, cancel. Now we're gonna now the second part. We're gonna move our script that we created into a special folder, and that folder is slash etc slash init dot d. We're gonna move it here. Unfortunately, we cannot just drag and drop because access will be denied. So we have to use the terminal. So we're gonna cd to our home directory. You can use the title key slash with a slash best uh desktop and then we're gonna move the file no ip2 to, to the location this location so move mv space no ip2 space the new location press enter it says we do not have permission we have to run as sudo No, no errors popped up, and the file disappeared, and the file is here now. The next part is we find the file, no IP, two, or, yeah, and this is very important. We have to set the permissions. The file has to be executable, executable. If permission was denied, you can use this the following command to make it so. Success. And the last part to make it work every time we restart is we have to link the script to the startup script by issuing four commands. We move to this directory, issue the following command. Oops. Issue this command. The third command. And the fourth command. Now, the program will start every time we start a computer. We can check this by restarting the computer. Okay, so we have a freshly, freshly restarted 
uh, whatever. If you go to system monitor, type in no IP. And no IP2 is running right here. So all is good. You can double check that by opening up terminal. And typing the following command minus s, oops, capital S, run as sudo. It says it's running, everything is good. So we have completed the installation. To uninstall the program, we're going to first check if it's running. We're going to do this with this command. Oh. Oh, Didn't command it twice. We're going to use this command right here. Press enter. It says one, I, one, one process is running. If it is, we're going to open the configuration file. Oops. Similar command. But this time, we're going to see. And it's going to tell us the process number, 2917. Then we're going to kill the kill the process. Copying this number right here. process has been terminated so to review we're gonna use this command right here uh, da -da -da -da, here and replace this number with the process number it gives you so now the program is no longer running now we're gonna delete the files for the program so we have five commands to issue each one will delete a file or a folder the first command was issued now the second command, third command, luckily we don't have that file so we don't need to remove it, the fourth command, pay attention to what version you have, in my case my version is 2.1.9.-1, you might have a different version so you might have to change this, this command to meet your version or you might have to change it to Depending on where you installed it, see, I we installed it in user local slash so source. You might have chosen to install somewhere else. Lastly, we're gonna remove the boot file if you chose to do it. So it boots up every single time you start a computer. If you didn't do that, that's fine, and you don't have to do this part. But for those who did, we just remove that, and we receive no errors, so that file was removed. Finally, we're going to remove any leftover files. We're going to na navigate to our slash sectra, etc, whatever, you know what that means, directory. We're going to use the ls command to show what we have. And we're going to see that we have a couple folders by the name of these file, these folders. We're going to have to go into each of these folders and look for anything related to no IP. So, copy the first one. Oops. Use the ls command, and we can see that there's a file called ko5 and op2. We're gonna remove that file. Permission to die, we need sudo. And we have to do this for every single folder that there is.
There's none here. Go to the next one. We see there's one right here. Remove that. Go to the next one. None here either. Almost last one. Good, I believe that was the last one. Let's double check. Yep, that was six. So now we have finished uninstalling it. And everything should be fine.